thinking about the characters and integrating them into the story is one of the easiest ways to make our game more enjoyable for both us and our players. When we think about all of the different activities, all the different kinds of preparation, all the areas where we can spend our time and attention on our game, there are a few areas that are going to give us as big an improvement as thinking about the characters and integrating them into the story. Today I'm going to offer five different ways that you can integrate characters into the story of your game. These can actually support either your homebrew adventures or published adventures, either way. For a published adventure, you probably need to modify some of the things that are actually published, and for homebrew you can wire it right in. But either way, you can integrate the goals, the backgrounds, and the motivations of the character into the story that's unfolding at the table. Let's take a look at these five. First, a really easy trick is to just relate the characters to some of the NPCs. Whether it's an NPC quest giver, or a villain, or other NPCs that are there for the story, you can tie these to the characters in a bunch of different ways. Maybe they're a distant relation. Maybe they're old war buddies. Maybe they grew up in the streets together in some distant city. There's lots of different ways that the characters can be tied to NPCs, and we can take pretty much NPCs, whether they're in our published settings or whether they're in our homebrew settings, and just change them a little bit by tying them directly to the characters through some kind of relation. Whether it's a family relationship or some kind of history that they tie together, there's lots of ways to tie NPCs to the characters, and it's almost always a good way for the player to feel like their character is directly tied into the story of the adventure. It's one thing if you're facing a high-ranking cultist of the Cult of the Dragon, but it's something else if that high-ranking cultist is actually your cousin. Another way we can integrate characters into this story is through magic items. Magic items are also one of these really high, bang-for-the-buck things that we can spend our time and attention on, because players love magic items. It's just something they're really into. It's a direct improvement of their character, it's a tangible benefit. Who doesn't love magic items? If you want to make your players happy, really spend time on magic items. But even better is when we can tie the magic items to the characters' backgrounds, motivations, and goals as well. Maybe that item that they picked up is actually an ancestral heirloom. Maybe it's an item that'll grow in power as they accomplish their own quests. There's lots of different ways that we can take magic items and tie them directly to the characters. Maybe the item has some kind of history that teaches the characters something about their background they didn't know. So not only can we drop in a magic item that players really love and are, and are eager to see their character use, but that the history of that magic item and the future of that magic item can actually have a direct tie to the character's growth in the game. Now third, we can expose the character's background and history through the lore of the game. If the character is of a particular race, or they have some particular ancestry, or some connection to another piece of lore, we can expose more about that lore as the characters are exploring the world around them. If they're delving into dungeons deep or caverns old, they can find old mosaics or statues. They can learn things from items that they pick up, or old texts that are telling them something about their character. Maybe it's something about the patron that they follow, maybe it's something about their ancestry or the organizations that they're tied to. There's lots of different ways that we can expose expose old history that actually matters directly to the characters. It's one thing to use secrets and clues to expose the histories of areas or the histories of our world, and it's something else when those histories are telling the players something about their characters that they might not have known. Now fourth, we can actually work with the players to change the character during the course of an adventure. Now this is something you really want to work with the player on hand in hand. This isn't something you want to do on your own and just surprise the player with. But there might be opportunities for the character themselves to change. Maybe it's a class change, or maybe they're going to switch into a multi-class. Maybe their origin changes. There's lots of different things that can happen during a game that directly change a character. It could be a, a curse that grows slowly, that doesn't completely debilitate their character, but changes them into something else. Maybe the character makes a dark choice that shifts their origin from one side to the other. Maybe the only way Way they think they're going to be able to defeat the horrible evil that they're facing is to become dark themselves and drink eldritch liquid that changes them into a vampire. Now, in these cases, we always want to make sure that it's a choice for the player. It doesn't always have to be a choice for the character, but the player should have the agency to decide if they want to take the, these options or not. This isn't something that we should force on them. We should make sure that we're checking in with the player and making sure that they're cool with all of these changes that are happening to these characters. Some players really love these changes, and they really double down and dive into them, and that can be great. But we also want to check with the other players, too, to make sure everybody's still comfortable with what's going on here. We don't want a player to go so far in one direction that they're now alienated from the rest of the group. Even if the player is on board, the rest of the group might not be. So it's always good to check in with everybody and make sure that while these changes are taking place that everybody's still on board with this and thinks that it's a cool direction for the story to go. 
Now the last one's kind of a dirty trick. We can actually switch this around, and instead of building the entire world around the backgrounds of the characters, we can work with the players to change the backgrounds of the characters to support the world and the story that we're telling. This works best in a session zero. Before the game begins, before they've even started thinking about their characters, you're already feeding them information about the kind of story that's going to take place, important NPCs that they might be connected to, quest NPCs, organizations that they might be connected to, and that way up front, but while they're building their characters, they can already start to think about how they're related to important NPCs or important factions that are going to take place in the adventure. In this way, we can work hand in hand with our players, both building the world around the characters' backgrounds and motivations, but also helping the characters' backgrounds and motivations support the story that we're telling. It's really a two-way street here. Integrating characters in the campaign is a really high impact way to make our game better. It doesn't cost us anything at all. We don't need to buy any special tools or extra books. It doesn't even really take that much time. It's just a different focus of the direction on where we think about our game and what we're doing. It's the reason why the first step of the eight steps of Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master are to focus on the characters, read up on the characters at the beginning of every session, look at their backgrounds, look at their motivations, and think about how we can tie those backgrounds and motivations to the things that are going to happen in our adventure. It's a really high impact way to make our games better. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can help me out in a few ways. You can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. You can support me directly on Patreon. You can pick up any of my books or you can subscribe to my videos right here on YouTube. Thank you very much and have a great day.